This is a tin of pilchards. Other brands of pilchard are available. Um, now, you may be wondering, what the hell has this got to do with music? In truth, nothing really. However, I recently picked up quite a few of these piezo contact microphones a whole job lot from ebay now these microphones work by adhering to some kind of flat uh, fairly hard surface that is resonating and it will pick up the vibrations in that surface and transfer it into an electrical signal that we can output somehow and hear the results. These would normally be used, for example, on an acoustic instrument like a soundboard of an acoustic guitar, a violin, um, but there are many in varied or creative uses for these contact microphones. However, the way that these work, they are not normally ideally suited for a kind of a handheld microphone that you might use to record vocals or something else of that nature. However, that is what we're going to attempt to make today. I have no idea if this is actually going to work, but my thinking is that if I can attach this to a, a thin board like this piece of wood, very flimsy piece of wood, um, and we put this sort of wooden plate into our housing, which is the pilchard tin, so that it contacts the sides of the tin then any sound entering this sort of chamber is going to be sort of resonating in this chamber and hopefully those resonances and vibrations are going to transfer into this board and into this contact mic now this is going to be extremely low-fi it's not in any way going to be a high quality mic but I think it should be a fun experiment and whatever happens there's one thing we do know for certain and that's what I'm having for lunch today. So I'm going to go and make myself some pilchards on toast and I will return with a nice clean empty tin for us to get started. Right so I've removed the base from the pilchards can and we've cleaned it out and I've consumed the contents. Now, the next thing to do is to cut this board down to size so that we can slide this in here. Now, the, you may have noticed that I've cut the base off this can and I used the tin opener to cut along the side rather than on the top. Uh, this was so that once this board is cut to size, I can easily slide this inside and hopefully if I cut it to the right width, it will neatly contact the sides of the can and give us a good transfer of the, the sort of vibrations. To cut this down to width, I've already scored and marked it in the right place. Don't know if you can see that on camera. Um, but yeah, hopefully I cut this more or less bang on to the correct width because ideally what I do want is a nice firm connection when once that slides in all right okay i'm just going to line this ruler up with the outside of the line that i've scored there we go i think that's got it so hopefully if this is not to the right size it will be slightly over and we can sand it down to get it to fit that was easy enough to cut right let's just check to see if that goes and it doesn't quite so we're slightly oh no wait ah okay there we go it does fit to be honest that's slightly slightly looser than I was hoping it was going to be. Oh well. So this plate, wooden plate, is a bit looser in here than I was hoping. 
it would be. I thought that we might be able to get it to sort of wedge in and kind of hold itself under the friction between the, the plate and the sides. It doesn't seem to be the case. It's better in some orientations than others, but it's still not as tight as I was hoping it was going to be. It's not a problem. We could just glue this in. I did think that it might be quite nice if we could attach this plate or this board, sorry, to the to the base so it just slots in. We could still do that. What I could do is put a runner on either side of the board going down the inside of the can and have two on each side so that we kind of create a neat little groove or a slot for that to run into. More things to consider. The other thing that does need to be taken into consideration is the fact that um, if we put our base on and we have our input jack mounted in there, if we put it nice and in the middle, which would be probably the easiest and make the most sense, it's going to run into this board unless we cut the board to give ourselves enough clearance for the input jack. I was hoping to try and keep this board as large as possible to give ourselves the best chance of kind of having vibrations going through it. So rather than cutting the whole thing short, what I could do is maybe cut out a, a kind of a U-shape channel here, just enough so that this will sort of be housed within it and then we still have the full length of the board running down the sides. So I think that's our best option. What do I need to do next? Um, I guess maybe cut this down to size, then look at mounting the, this piezo on here and drill some holes or drill a hole for this jack. Yeah, got to have a think about the order of operations for this, but uh, yeah, I think it might be good to start and trim this board down to the correct length to start with. So let's do that first. So I've sanded this board down a little bit so that it fits inside the can. I think I need to sand it down a little bit more so that the, the lid will go on properly. Um, I've also marked up um, an area of the board to cut away that should give us enough clearance for our jack to sit in there. Okay, so yeah, um, ignore what that looks like. And um, we've got a fairly clean hole burned in there. So I'm going to cut the rest away. And I'm going to try and do this on camera, even though it's extremely awkward with the camera in my way. But this is fairly soft, thin wood, so it should be relatively easy to do. I've 
missed my lines there quite considerably, so I'm going to have to probably file or sand some of this away anyway. I think that should just about be done. Yeah, there we go. Maybe I can... Carve some of this away a bit. Have to be careful. It's not too bad, right. We've sanded and smoothed all of these edges off, got it to the shape we want, and that should give us enough clearance for the, the jack. So I guess the next thing to do is to attach the piezo contact mic onto there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of put it in this orientation so that I can curl the wires around and then they're more or less in the right place for, whoops, for our jack, rather than cutting the wires short and then I'd rather leave them long and then cut them short later if that's a better option. Yeah, I might go and get myself some lunch and then come back to this in a little while. Not pilchards today though. So, progress has been made. I have drilled a not very round, not very centred hole in this bottom plate cap, lid, I don't know what you want to call it. Um, thankfully, there was enough leeway to allow me to adjust this slightly and get it a little bit more central. And I think that's good enough. So the next thing I think that we need to do is to attach this. So I've made a decision, sorry, I should say, I've made a decision to Try and attach this to here and have this as one whole unit that can slide in and out of the, the can. I think that's a, a more elegant solution than having that affixed to the sides there and then having this bit that removes but is attached by the wires. <clears throat> um, even though that might be a slightly easier option in some in some ways so we'll figure something out to get this attached and then I think I do want to have something on the inside that will line this up and allow this to slot in neatly and and stay in place so maybe maybe I should do that first I have now added some cocktail sticks to the inside um, I didn't film doing this because I knew it was going to be really tricky. It was really fiddly to do without attempting to film it on top. So yeah, I've done that off camera. I managed to use some super glue to glue these in place. The actual board, I was worried that I might glue that in place because I used it as a spacer for the cocktail stick runners. Um, so I've melted some candle wax and put that on the sides just to help avoid gluing that in place. There were a couple of hairy moments where I almost glued this in place, but thankfully that worked out. I've now attached this to the base plate. This was actually probably the trickiest bit of the build so far. Um, I've had to mark this up very carefully on the side where this lines up um, with these cocktail stick runners but one of the next things I need to do which I haven't talked about yet is I we need to have some kind of holes here to allow the sound to come in I mean we could just keep it as a closed unit which might work if you've got it very close to your mouth or very close to the source thing that you're recording um, but it might be better with some holes and maybe like a, a a mesh grill that you would normally have on a microphone. Now, 
in order to, to do that, if that's the route that I go, what I will probably do is drill out either one large hole or maybe a series of small holes. I'm leaning towards just drilling out one large hole because I think it's going to be easier and less chance of me screwing it up. And then in, into that hole, I'm going to insert some mesh, which right now I can't find, of course. Um, what it is, is, uh, ah, here it is. It's a, a the sort of wire screen, mesh screen from a coffee filter, a cafetiere type coffee filter. And I think there's enough there for me to to have a, a, a decent sized opening and to cover that. So at some point I'm going to drill a hole in here. We'll, we'll cut a piece of this to size, feed that in from here and then figure out a way, probably gluing it again into place on the inside. Then we can get to attaching the piezo, wiring it up and at that point I can test it out, see if it works. So I have glued these little blocks in place. When I test this in here, it does now, it does fit. It's slightly wonky in this orientation. If I put it in the other in orientation, it's even worse. <laughs> um, considering how difficult it was to to glue this on, I'm going to call that good enough. You can't really tell. But yeah, okay. We're getting somewhere. Now we can actually think about installing this piezo. I can... I think if I do it like that, curl the wires round, then I can solder those onto the right lugs. And then once that's done, stick this piezo in place. Okay, so I've just done a quick sound check to make sure that's working, and it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue this onto here. I've managed to glue the lid of my super glue shut, so... Yeah, I might just have to do this off camera, because otherwise I'm going to make an awful mess, I've got a feeling probably going to do that anyway. Wow, that's a lot of super glue. Okay, that didn't go very good. Okay, so not only did I put tons of glue on there, glue it slightly off centre, but I've also broken the, the ground wire off the solder point on the piezo. So that was a triple whammy of bad execution there. So, yeah, I guess I've got to solder this back onto there now. Right, so, yeah, I've soldered this back on. So it's back up and running and working again. For various reasons, I think I've decided I'm going to peel this label off carefully and we'll deal with the rest of it with a bare can. I don't know how well I'm going to do at peeling this off on camera. It seems to be working so far. Okay, it's tearing a little bit down there. Let me just have a look at that closer up. 
All right. I think I've freed that up. I think we're in business. And it's tearing there a little bit. So let me just do the same thing on this side. There we go. Right. Okay, there we go. The label is off in more or less one piece. Right, I guess the next thing we need to do is drill a hole in here and fit the mesh. Hopefully, a nice clean and centered hole in here. Wish me luck. Right, so here is kind of the finished Pilcher Cam mic. What I've done, I've glued the screen mesh, the wire mesh in place. I used a bit of wood glue for that. Um, there's a bit of a hole there which I couldn't really work around. So yeah, I'm just going to live with that. Um, so to all intents and purposes, this is a working item. I couldn't resist. I've done a few sound tests quickly off camera. Um, I guess the only thing left to do might be some cosmetics and possibly think about some way to attach this in place. At the moment, it fits in there quite snugly. It doesn't really cause too much of an issue, so I might worry about that another day. But I think really, unless I can be bothered to try and glue this label on or do some other kind of aesthetic decoration to this, I think really the only thing left to do is to have some fun and try and make some music using this. So, this is a recording through the Pilted Cam mic. It's, um, surprisingly, it's a lot clearer than I thought it was going to be. However, there is also a lot of noise. Any kind of slight handling noise, breath noises, um, stubble scratching, the, uh, the, wire, the wire mesh, all of this um, makes it quite a noisy listen, but it works and I think in certain applications this could be really useful, so I guess we should try and make some music, let's see what we can create using this filtered can microphone. <laughs>
So there we go, a very cheap and simple contact microphone, a bit of a lo-fi monster. It's a very simple build, the parts are readily available and cheap. It only requires a piezo contact mic and a quarter inch mono jack plug, a bit of soldering, and um, you can actually buy the piezo contact mics with an output jack already soldered on. So if you don't have that equipment, you could go that route. So that was a lot of fun to build. I hope you enjoyed watching along and maybe that's inspired you to have a go at building something similar or maybe even making an improvement. Whatever you end up doing, I hope that uh, you are inspired to go out and do something creative and until the next time guys take care of yourselves and i will see you again real soon well you'll probably be seeing me not so much me seeing you but yeah it's a saying isn't it i'll see you soon peace out